going on, guys? Welcome to Serendipity Podcast Season 2, Episode 14, man. Having an unbelievable time. Want to talk to him about what we're going to discuss today. Oh, yes, sir. We invite you to an enlightening conversation about serendipity, faith, and maturity. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Yes, Lord. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Serendipity with Inky Johnson across all podcast platforms, including YouTube. Be sure to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. We greatly appreciate your support. Hope you guys enjoy the show. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Serendipity Podcast, man. Season 2, episode 14. I'm Ink. I'm Oak. What's happening, people? Man, um, you know, feeling great, man. Feeling healthy, feeling blessed, man. How you feeling, man? What, what type of time you on, man? <laughs> hey, you know how you know I am. Saying? What type of time we For have, real, man. man. If I if I was doing any better right now, I had to go to heaven. For yes, real. Sir. That is the only thing that beat this moment right here. I got you. Um man. for sure, man. I I I've been um I guess we we what in the second week, second week of this 2022. Mm-hmm. Year and and whatever has transpired is transpired and all that is good. Um, but I'm more so into the season. I'm in the middle of the season of spirituality, um, and, and so you know we start out with the cards, and I can't wait to to hear what it is you got to say. And I'm gonna give my two cents on it. And I so, got to I just got something on my heart that we gonna. I I just want to throw out at you in a minute gotcha. after we uh. After we chop it up a little bit. I got you. Brought to you by D Sugar Boo and Company. It reads, for everything you have missed, you have gained something else. And for everything you gain, you lose something else. For everything you have missed, you gain something else. And for everything you gain, you lose something else. Be in the moment. Mm-hmm. Be in the moment. Yeah. Because it's not so much of, uh, like, I, I, you don't, want to be too high because yeah. oh in this moment right here I, I got a chance to you know I got a chance to meet Inky Johnson like oh the great Inky Johnson mm-hmm. but you missed picking your son up mm. yeah. cool there's no it, there's no there's no in or out there's no, no right or wrong no. you know what I'm saying I got that opportunity to meet Inky Johnson there's something that I wanted to do and this that and the third right yeah. what it really says to me everything has a cost Mm. Everything has cost, and cost. there is no value or or no nothing um, that we're gonna put on on it. Like everything just has a cost. Everything has a cost, right? And so, are you willing to pay it? And in some cases, like when you place in that position, okay, I got a chance to meet Inky Johnson. I got a chance to meet whomever, Michael Jordan. I got a chance to meet Barack Obama or. or <clears throat> and it cost me the opportunity to, you know, take my daughter to her first, you know, get measured for her dress for the prom. Yeah. Though, and I, I'm choosing these things very specifically, right? Those very um, intimate situations that we may miss out on. Mm-hmm. And we may like, oh, man, I got I to gotta juggle between the two. No, not really. What happens is it doesn't matter. Like, if you... If it were the reverse, I took my daughter to get measured for her dress for the prom. Mm. Do I maximize that situation? No doubt. I got a chance to meet Barack Obama. It cost me the opportunity to take my son to do this, that, and the third. It cost me the opportunity to uh, take my wife on our, uh, you know, our our weekly date night. Right. Right. So, what did I gain from meeting? Barack Obama. What did I gain from this experience? So that's why we got to be cognizant of every experience that that we encounter, because we we are ex- exchanging something of our life for it. Absolutely. And you can never really be on in front of everything. Mm-hmm. It's just that in every opportunity, every experience that we have, maximize it, because you are you are paying a price for it. Mm. You're paying a, a a an experience price. Your family is paying a price. Your loved yes, one is paying a price. Your your friends may be paying a price. Yes, whoever, sir. whatever. But in that moment, if you maximize it, mm-hmm. then you win it. Yes, sir. Right. So, uh, in everything you that you've missed, you gain something. In everything that you gain, you lose something. 
right? There's some wins and losses and everything. So you act, make sure that everything and every moment, wherever your feet are, you are being advantageous. You're yeah. taking advantage of that moment and that experience. That's the part that you can control. You can't control what you lose. Mm. You can't control what you gain. Mm. You can control how well and how much you maximize the experience. Yeah, man, that's... Um made me think about serendipity. Yeah. You know? When um when you found what you were searching for was better than what you was looking for. Mm-hmm. Right? Because oftentimes we're searching for something. Whether that be searching for happiness, searching for joy, searching for peace, right? We're searching for something. And oftentimes when it says, for everything you've missed, you've gained something else, and for everything you gain, you lose something else. The whole essence of serendipity is when you find something that you didn't expect and it ended up ben- benefiting you in your advancement as a person, right? That's why I named it serendipity, right? Because oftentimes we go in search of things and we bump into something else or we find something else and then we look up <laughs> one day and we like, man, like, this cat all right. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. This, this situation all right. Like, I thought this was going to be terrible a oh, man mm-hmm. i thought i wasn't gonna like that. i thought this level of adversity was gonna break me right Bro. but it ended up benefiting me there's a quote called we got it here i love it too man it says when you come out of the storm you won't be the same person that walked in mm-hmm. that's what the storm is all about right now in the midst of the storm a lot of people feel like man i lost this i lost that mm-hmm. right but when you come out of the storm the perspective that you gain yeah. right the person that you have become Right? The happiness that you've gained, the joy, the peace that you've gained, right? You always gain something in spite of what you consider to be a loss. And and the thing that you lost, you were supposed to lose it. You're supposed to lose it. It was time to put it down. You're supposed to lose it. Right? Man. You were supposed to you were supposed because if if you understand it that way, if you understand that I was supposed to lose it, then you now have no emotional attachment to losing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. That's what we mean by I'm picking up what you're putting down. No but doubt. also, I'm putting down in this moment what I don't need anymore. Yeah, man. I don't need that anymore. Because I've been yeah. through the storm. I, I'm not going through that storm anymore. I got every lesson I was supposed to get from that storm. So everything that I needed going into the storm, mm. and because I got all the lessons that I was supposed to get, yes, I don't need what I, I took into the storm anymore. I left it right there. Mm. Put it down. Put it down. Right? And the, the, this, the crazy thing about serendipity, the, the thing is, people, we do it all the time. Yep. Even in the simplest of things, right? I may have, I'm looking for my key. I need this, this key that I rarely use. I'm looking for this key. I'm looking for this key. And in the midst of looking for this key, I find my lost remote control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the, really the thing that I really <laughs> want, that most that remote control. Right? <laughs> As Andre say, whatever floats your boat or find your lost remote. Yeah. Like, do you find your lost remote, man? That feeling right there, yeah, boy, God, <laughs> hey, that, you know, so that's serendipity. Yeah. It, it, it's like you finding something that uh, you had put down to the side or you you had just left alone or, and it ain't it ain't worth it no more. Yeah. But then when you find it, you realize, yes, this is really what my soul and my spirit been searching for the whole time. I wonder, oh, like, can can one create serendipity, right? In terms of like we're speaking about you find a lost remote or you meet a person or you bump into a situation or something works out that you didn't think would work out and it looked to be like it was about to be a tragedy, Mm -hmm. right? But in order to experience serendipity or even catch it, you got to be in tune. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Because when something shows up that you didn't expect, it's like most of the time opportunity shows up, but it's dressed like a construction work in overalls or something like that. Right. But yeah. it's an opportunity. But most people don't catch it because when they see something that looks like work, most people go the opposite direction. And so when I think about serendipity, you got to be in tune mm-hmm. because for most of us, when the experience shows up that we didn't expect, we waste the experience. That wasn't what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the person I was looking for. That wasn't the situation I was looking for. And so you out when God might be sending you the perfect situation. Oh, man, I got to read this. I got to read this. 
Okay. I gotta read get it, this. get it, get it. Let it, let it, let it, let it move. Keep my phone away from the mic. Let it, but let I it gotta, move you, man. I gotta let read this, you. man. Let it move you. Man, this thing was so powerful, man. Check what it say. I gotta read this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You ain't gotta, gotta apologize, this. man. You ain't gotta apologize for greatness, yes, boss. Sir. You never gotta apologize for greatness. It says, I'm gonna put this up here. Make sure it ain't. It says, try not to resist the changes that come your way. Instead, let life live through you and do not worry that your life is turning upside down or not going the way that you want it to. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one that's to come? Mm. Mm. Don't say it again. How do you know the side that you're used to is not better than the one that's that's becoming? Try not to resist the changes that come your way. Instead, let life live through you. And do not worry that your life is turning upside down and not going the way you want it to. How do you not know that the side that you are used to is better than the one that's to come? Mm-hmm. Man, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. When you op- when you're open, right? When you're when you're really open to the universe, because that's essentially what I'm hearing that that that. that passage is saying when you become open to the universe then you're you're inviting your own greatness Mm. you're inviting your own immortality you're inviting your own connection with god when you're open to it yeah right when you're open it's always like in mj wouldn't have been mj if he was not open to the teachings of phil jacks yes sir yes sir this whole, the whole, you know, MJ being Wilmington, North Carolina, Christian, this, that, and the third. And then here come uh, Phil speaking on th- these Buddhist principles, which in reality, because we're talking about spirit, all of them intertwine and go together anyway. Yes, sir. Right? It's only in this place, in this paganistic, paganonymous place called America that we try to uh, exact differences on people so that we can— um, exact our control, where really all of them That's saying the same thing. That's you know what I'm saying? The, the God yesterday is the God today, the God tomorrow, right. and however you want, whatever you want to call him, it's still the same God in the universe. Miss me with that. I'm sorry. My fault. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off on that little tangent. But so um, when you open to what the universe has for you, then what happens is you're able to see those moments of serendipity. You're able to receive those moments of serendipity. Yes, sir. You're able to um, be able to receive what the universe has for you Mm -hmm. so you are the creator of your serendipity no doubt the level to which you are open the level to which you are or we are um vulnerable and transparent with our hearts Mm -hmm. with ourselves like the the more i'm able to be able to say hey man i love you no doubt and say it in the most public of places to show the most uh, profound affection for my brother. Of course. Right? That, what I'm really doing is just opening the way for the universe to come and work through me, mm-hmm. for me to be able to experience who I'm supposed to be, yeah. to manifest my destiny. Yeah. I got you. Right? So that's, that's mm, I'm with you. It's, you know, like, when I read that, the reason I grabbed that phone it says, how do you know the life that you were used to is not better than the one that's to come? And you think about the past two years. You think about being in the new year. People's lives being shaken up, right? And I want to tell a story. I heard Warren Buffett share a story. It was a lady that was an immigrant. She came to this country with her daughter, mm-hmm. right? She couldn't speak a lick of English, right? She comes over to this country. Her daughter gets put in school. Her daughter starts learning English, right? Now, when they moved to this country, mom wasn't feeling it, right? She wasn't open to it because she was leaving the life that she was used to, Mm -hmm. right? And now I got to go to a space that I'm not used to, right? It says, how do you know the life that you were used to is not better than the one that's to come? Immigrant, moves to this country, wasn't feeling it because she left what she was used to. Comes to this country, don't know a lick of English. Daughter in school, learning English. Comes home every day and teaches it to the mom. Mm -hmm. Through the daughter teaching the mom English, the mom starts a business. Small furniture business with $2,500, right? 
After she starts the business with the initial investment of $2,500, she never had to put another dollar into the business from the outside forces of people, investors, things of that nature, because she turned so much profit. Ended up selling the business to Warren Buffett for north of $60 million because she left what she was used to. Now, if somebody would have came to her and said, hey, man, how you know what you're used to is not better than what's to come? You go into a place you can't even speak English, and everybody speaks English in the first language. Mm -hmm. She probably would have been like, yeah, you're right. I don't want to leave what I'm used to. But she did it. And the serendipity in the moment was she placed her kid in school. Kid started learning English. Kid was able to come home, teach her mom English. Mom took the English, started a business. And now her life is better than it ever would have been. Right? And so when yeah. I hear Kat say, man, I'm leaving what I'm used to, I'm like, bro, how you know what you're used to is better than what's to come. Mm -hmm. Right? What's the blessing of being open to change, to uncertainty, to new blessings, new creativity? Bro. Right? But we're so, we're so scared and we're holding on to what we're used to that, bro, you're not even open. It's like when a cat get money and close their hand. You close your hand. Right? You caught the blessing. Mm-hmm. But you can't receive any more because you're not open, bro. Bro. You got to open yourself up in order to receive. But, you know, I'm off my, my thoroughbred horse. Um, I had to, I had to I, talk about that. I feel you. I feel you, man. And it's so to me, when I, I'm listening to the story, there's, it goes, everything for me, man, goes back to principles, mm -hmm. right? It goes back to the principle of mom having the humility to learn from the child. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, who has the humility to learn from the ch from their children? Yeah. And because she doesn't know, meaning on the backside or when you're hearing the story, in your mind, you're like, oh, it's $60 million on the backside of this. Yeah. But in real time, mm -hmm. when she's just following the teachings of her daughter, right. she doesn't know what's on the backside of this. Oh. No. So there has to be, it's rooted in the principles. Yeah. It's rooted in the principle of humility. Mm -hmm. right? And it may not have yielded $60 million. Or it, who knows what it may have yielded? Yeah. It may not have yielded anything except for the understanding and the greatness or, or, or the openness and the self-growth of the mom having submitted herself mm -hmm. to the teachings of her daughter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. It just so happened that it yielded you sixty million. Right. Just so happened. Just Who so cares happened. Yep. about it yielding you the sixty million? Because yep. guess what? You will never know for sure that what it's going to yield you on the front end. Yep. You never know what your submission, what your um, you adhering to the principles that you live by, is going to um, give you. Mm -hmm. And 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 manifest in you on the front end. Yeah. So you have to do it just off principle alone. No doubt. That's the whole point. I'm going to walk in principle. I'm going to walk in faith. I don't know what the end gonna be. Yeah. I'm just gonna run on to see. Yeah. I believe I run on. Yeah. To see, see what the, the end, end gonna be. Because no I know yeah. something that the end is waiting for me. That's what all the old folks were telling you. Now I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I just know that it is. Yes, sir. Something at the end is waiting for me. Right. That is the faith. That is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things yes, not seen. Sir. Yes, sir. Right? I know that there's something at the end waiting for me. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what it is. And guess what? It doesn't matter. Right. That's inconsequential. It is inconsequential because whatever it is, it is there to make me better. Yeah. It is there for me to be closer to God. It is there for me to be closer to the manifest destiny that I'm sitting here to become. Absolutely. I'll be quiet in a minute. Yeah. Be quiet in a minute. So check, oh, talk to me. My boy um, John Gordon, he does this thing every year called One Word. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you pick a word that you try to use to the best of your ability to carry you throughout the year with situations, circumstances, people, and things of that nature. And um, last year, of course, my word was gratitude. Gratitude. Um, I, I picked it up. Yeah. I picked yeah. it up. Now, this year, uh, my word is going to be serendipity, mm. right? Like, I'm going to go throughout life 
And that's my word. That's what I'm looking for in essence. Mm -hmm. Like every single day, the essence of looking for blessings. Yeah. In the most simplest moments. Not getting up every single day looking for some big, some grand, but just appreciating the small, simple things of life. Right? Like one would say celebrating the small wins. Mm -hmm. Right? Celebrating my development as a father in terms of communicating with my children a certain way. Right? Picking up what my wife put down in terms of becoming a better listener. Right? In terms of being a better orator, communicator. Right? Picking up the serendipity in moments every single day in my life. Things that didn't go a certain way but ended up benefiting me and working out. Now, the principle is... I got to put myself in such a space of growth and openness to be able to catch it. I'm talking about the purity of growth and openness, right? Because Mm -hmm. my wife might say something to me in terms of that growth and development from serendipity standpoint that I might not be feeling at the time, right? I might not be a good listener on that day, yeah. right? In terms of with my children, trying to better communicate and learning when to pause, when to address situations, when not to. In terms of when I'm traveling, things might not go the way I want it to. What's the serendipity in a moment? In essence, taking serendipity, the word, but making it a blessing, right? What's the serendipity in the moment? What's the blessing in the moment? What's the blessing? In the what's the moment? lesson in the moment? But what's the serendipity in the moment? What's the blessing in the moment? What's the lesson in the moment? And so I'm going to carry that word with me, man, throughout 2022. And I'm going to try to insert it into every aspect and phase of my life. Um, It's crazy that you say it, man. It, what's crazy is like how, you know, it, it may seem like I don't know how it is to the, to the, the public who, you know, view these um, podcasts or whatever, like, we we don't talk every day, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. <laughs> you, uh, like just last night, yep. as I was saying earlier, no you doubt. you text. It was like nine fifteen. We yep. got a session in the morning. What's up? I'm like, all right, cool. That's how you work. And um, but I I'm saying that to say I was just thinking like, what's my what's my thing that I'm taking into the new year? Like we on the same wavelength in terms of even thinking about. What is something you're taking into the new year, taking into this new season, right? And for me, my thing is spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've ran from spirituality for a minute. Minute being, like, it's one of the principles that I learned, one of the five basic fundamental principles. And because I was I was introduced to spirituality early on, on, a, on an elementary level, I've kind of rolled out with that for you know, for the past 30 years, if you will, probably since I was about 15. Um, and so now I'm I'm cognizant and, and really just focusing on my my ability to walk with here and know the creator. Yeah. Like on the on the for real basis. And so then, okay, what get outside the esoteric and what are some things that you're gonna do? Like for me, um, I, I was not a, a public praying person. Mm-hmm. I would, you know, me and God, we talk all the time. I, we get down with that cold blooded cat all the time. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of um, allowing other people to other people to see my relationship with God and how that is, I think is going to be influential and beneficial for not only myself but for the community of our circle and for for other people. Yeah. That's that's where I'm on. That's that's the time I'm on right now. Yeah. I'm on this spiritual time right now. Yeah. Because um, like I think I think it's always important to have something to aim for, but also having a compass and something that can realign you. Yeah. Right? And for me, like when I think about one word, I'm the type of person I'm wired to where I love having things in place, not physically just in place, but things in place mentally that every single day I get up, I got to be cognizant of it Mm -hmm. because growth doesn't just happen. No. You know what I'm saying? Like growth does not just happen. You don't wake up and you just grow. You got to be intentional about that. Mm -hmm. You don't wake up and you just become great. You don't wake up and you just start doing things. You got to be intentional about it, right? Like I tell cats every single day, like when I wake up and I read these quote cards, like for me, yeah, it's cool. I enjoy it, right? I read it. It gets my mind going. It creates dialogue between me, my wife, my children, my partners. But 
I do that every single day for me. That's putting on my armor. Yeah. Right? Before I walk out the door. I'm being intentional. I ain't going to get up and just let life hit me and I walk out of the door and then now I'm on the emotional roller coaster Mm -hmm. and I'm all over the place. And now I can't I can't catch grips on my dreams, my goals, my aspirations. Now I'm mad at people I shouldn't be mad at because some didn't work out. No, nah, bro, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to put on my armor. I'm going to be intentional about what I want to accomplish, direction I want to go, and the person I'm trying to become mm-hmm. to the best of my ability. Now, does that mean success every single day? Absolutely not. I'm going to fail probably more than I have success. Right. But I know that already. That's like if I go in the gym to make a thousand shots, Right. I ain't stepping in the gym saying, oh, man, I, I hope I don't miss none today. No, I know I'm going to miss some, right? And there's power in knowing that. Mm-hmm. And so now my process looks different, my process of development. LeBron said it. I was watching a clip last night. LeBron said when he was in year 16 and Magic Johnson said he resigned or he out, LeBron was like, man, I'm in year 16, I'm in the locker room. And he said when Magic sold me on coming here, he talked about the rebuilding process. Said, man, I'm in year, I was in year 16. At that point, I shouldn't be worried about no damn rebuilding process. I'm in championship mind mode. He said, but my humility for mm-hmm. magic and the moment and what I was trying to build put me in process mode. Right. And he said, but I knew that already. And so when we would lose, when things weren't going our way, when the crowd, when the audience, when we would look at ESPN and people were talking about what we wasn't doing, how terrible we were, how bad we were. I'm in process mode. I knew that already. And so it didn't break me as a leader. Mm -hmm. It didn't discourage me as a leader. It didn't make me go back and try to reassess and rearrange as a leader. My armor was on already. I was already prepared, bro. Now, if I wasn't prepared and my armor wasn't on, I get on and I watch first take and they say something crazy. I'm going to the all. Hey, man, I think we need to do this. Nah, bro. I'm staying the course because I know what I'm working for. Ain't, 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 ain't. You just you you said something that sparked um, just a thought. I probably forgot about it. I, I not probably. I know I forgot about it, or or definitely don't relish or or harp on it, right? Mm-hmm. But you remember, you remember, you, you know, your eighth grade class, my first class. Um, we thirty six deep, no doubt. Um, and the school thirty six. That's right. Thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah. Teacher student ratio. Yeah. 23 with 36, you heard 13, it, right? 14 years <laughs> Jesus Christ alive. Oh, it, right? That's probably why I don't think about that all <laughs> right. Life. But anyway, it was, um, you know, the school, we, it, you know, we're inner city and whatever, but we're being measured by test scores. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially in the city of Atlanta, and you got the north side, and they, you know, there's test scores with this, that, and the third all the way really high. Yeah. But then you had places like Kirkwood, places like Mechanicsville, places like uh, Cleveland Avenue, where the test scores in, in those schools were not as great. Yeah. And so um, I came in and really didn't care about it, about the test scores, right? I cared about, about y'all. Right. So what people were saying, like, man, y'all not going to do this, that, and the third. Y'all test scores are not going to be, you know, those kids can't learn, whatever. And um, stay in the course, as you were saying about what, what LeBron was saying, like, this is process. Yeah. Like, the way I was taught by Dr. Black, the way I was taught, this is about process. It's about the brilliance and the beauty of these black kids. Yeah. It's not about what they've done in the past. It's not about mm-hmm. what you think they know and don't know. It's about their spirit. Mm-hmm. It's about their soul. It's about their mind. It's about their creativity. And that's what we were tapping into. That's why your, your what was your, your project, your math project, was give me your book of Proverbs. Yeah. Your math project was you giving me your book of Proverbs. No doubt. Because we tapping into your spirit. Yeah. So now here come March. I don't care. Yeah. So here comes March with 36 cats. You know, we taking in the standardized ITBS test and, you know, what? 12 of y'all get 99 percentile. Mm. All 36 of y'all over 80 percentile on, yeah. the CT, on the CRCT. Yeah. And, and you know, Mr. Nelson coming around looking at me like, what y'all doing? Mm. I'm just loving black kids, bro. Mm. That's all I could tell him. <laughs> you know they crazy. I know they right. crazy, but I'm going to love them. Yeah, man. And I'm going to tell them that every day. That's the process. Yeah. That's when you're not attached to the result. I didn't care what y'all made. Yeah. I didn't care what the result, because I'm with you every day, so I know the brilliance. 
I know the struggle. I know some of y'all having to, as you say, put on your cousins or your uncle's sweatshirt or T-shirts every day to come to class. I know some of y'all had to uh, be babysitter and, and mom and dad at home to your little brothers and sisters, and you still came here. You may not did the homework, but you paid attention to class and you fought for it. Mm. That's the process. That's, uh, that's, the process. that's the process. That's the process. That's what when you said about LeBron and the Lakers, yeah. whatever, you know, that's what it made me think about, man. Yeah, because it's, it's always a process to greatness, I believe, right? Whatever greatness is defined as, right? And it's like, like I was talking about the entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. How in the world is dressed up as pretty cute and easy, right? But nobody talks about what it takes. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know how many cats I had on the road with me, man, early in my career? That I told, hey man, stay the course. Yeah. We're gonna get there. Like, just stay the course. We're gonna get there. And we riding at the time, driving all around the Southeast. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about driving. I'll never forget, I'm coming back from Tennessee through the snow. And I'm with one of my dudes, beautiful brother, brilliant brother. And, and I feel no malice toward any of them, right? It was just young and couldn't see it at the time, right? But I'll never forget it's snowing. And my man like, oh, man, we going to have to go to a hotel and chill. I'm like, nah, bro, I got a wife and two kids at home. We got to get there. I get behind the wheel. I got us, right? And when we pulled up in the driveway, he was like, oh, we really made it. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't no option. Yeah. We was going to make it, right? Like, that wasn't the option. That's what I was telling him about success and getting us to where we was going to get to. Mm-hmm. I was saying without saying, no, nah, bro, we going to get there. The only way we won't get there is if God stops in the middle of the world and say, hey, go that way. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to follow God and be like, all right, God, cool. I'm right. going to go that way. But in terms of the work, man, I ain't never been scared of no work. Hard work ain't killed nobody yeah. in terms of process and working for what you want. And so I'm telling them this entrepreneurship. Hey, man, stay the course. We're going to get there. Right? One cat go off this way. Another cat go off that way. I'll never forget. When I first released my book, mm-hmm. Hannah Kane, who worked with T.I. and Grand Hustle, I get connected with her beautiful sister, man. She was helping me out, right? And she had a lot of stuff to do, right? She ain't really had no business helping me at the time. <laughs> I ain't really got no real campaign, but she doing it out of the kindness of her heart. She uh-huh. met with me. She liked what I was trying to do. She liked my campaign. She believed in me. She telling me things that... She did early on with Tip and some of the people that helped them have success. And so when I come out with my book, we talk and we set up conference calls, right? Every week she'll set up a conference call. This is before I knew how to do any of that. She mm-hmm. would set it up for me. We would get 10, 15 people on the phone and she telling me what we got to do. Ink, how many units you moved already? I ain't know nothing about units. You know what I'm no. saying? She's speaking in those terms. I'm like, man, I ain't moved no units. Like I just got my book. Cool, no problem. She nice as all get out. So she says one night on the phone, hey, this is what we're going to do for Ink Book. You know what I'm saying? Help them get a couple of them off. She said, in the morning, I want everybody to turn their Facebook uh, picture to Ink's book, right? Everybody just change it to it for like a day, write a caption, right? This was supposed to be my team at mm-hmm. the time, right? And so everybody on the phone, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, we got you, right? We hang up. Next morning, roll around, one person mm. changed their profile to my book. You know who that one person was? My wife. This I ain't up. trip. I ain't trip. I ain't getting mad. Yeah. I call Hannah. Hannah, I greatly appreciate your time. But, man, I ain't going to waste your time with these cats, man. I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you so much, right? But I don't want to waste you got you got like some busy real stuff to do. You ain't got time to be baby walking right. with me and these yeah, cats yeah, that's gonna it. play around, right? Uh-huh. I appreciate you. So you so the much. cats that uh so these were these were your cats. These were yeah. not Anna's cats. No, 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 these are my cats. Oh, okay. She told okay. me, hey, okay. you got some cats? I'm like, yeah, bring them to the table. These are my cats. Not her. Okay. She was just helping. Got it. Got right. It. Got After it. we got off the call, I ain't even say nothing to him. Cat, oh man, I forgot. They on Facebook the same day. I forgot, man. 
I ain't put it on. I ain't tripping. No problem. Right. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Same you, cats. Hold on. Let me. I want to put a pin right there. When yeah. you say no pressure, I want to make sure that people really understand. No mm -hmm. pressure. Yeah. Like not no pressure. Um, I know I'm not really dealing with you no more. Now, right. or or it it shifts the way in which we get down. Right. It's no pressure in that. The understanding of the way God is working in my life. Yeah, no pressure. Right. I, it, no pressure. This is between, again, between me and God. No pressure. We good. We Not good. good. We, we're great. I don't I don't know what, what I'm cap trying to yeah. capture right now is the, is the language and the faculty of being able to express mm -hmm. that um, it really is wonderful all it really good, is cool bro. in fact all that's good. part of the serendipity that's because if y'all had done it maybe i would have gotten complacent with just that crew that that circle right there all because good. you because you didn't post the picture of the book oh good press me to a place yeah. of where i am right now exactly man you better go on somewhere boy hey, i know we i'm went on to sell units yes sir you hear me yeah units right yeah. Units. Some of them even hit me back. Hey, bro, what you got? Ain't none. We good. God bless you. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I appreciate you. Right? Some people come in our lives as blessings. Other people come in our lives as lessons. Yeah. But the serendipity of the moment, like you said, the way it worked out, the way it unfolded, the way it shifted, the way they handled it, is really no pressure. Like, I ain't mad at you. It ain't your dream. Right? Yeah. But I right. knew what God had in store for me. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to eat off of it. Yeah. Right? Because everything, everyone, in every situation has a function. Right. That's sometimes hard to hear, sometimes hard to, um, you know, really take in. Like, you have a function. Right. The function of, like, your function mm -hmm. for me was and is the understanding that I may be pretty decent at this mentorship. Right? That's the function. Mm -hmm. Now, the transcendence of the function is the relationship that's forged. Right. So that is now is non-transactional. Mm. But everybody, everything, every situation is a function. What function do you serve, do you hold in somebody else's life? Then the, the goal, because the universe puts us together for a function. Right. Then it's up to us to transcend that into a relationship of community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So the serendipity is in the function that, you know, whomever those cats on the conference call, the function was to serve and show you exactly what God got for you. Yeah. Through their activity or inactivity. Mm. Cool. No yeah. pressure. You serve the function. Yeah. You were the lesson or you were the blessing. That's yeah. the function. Yeah. Now, to take that to the another level is the work in which we put in to forge a relationship. That is divinity. Mm -hmm. That is godly. That is forged by the spirit. That is forged by the ancestors. That we are the answers and the prayers to to what they were asking God for. This connection right here. This serendipity. Us mm -hmm. being able to talk and and reach whomever. Yeah. Right. And because with that said, man, I, I don't want to uh, just a, a, a quick shift, bro. I want just three. It's a lot of people. Whole lot of people mm -hmm. um, out there who support us. Yeah. You know, this is what, the 14th episode? 14. And, you know, I, I we we both come across and, and meet and, and listen or hear people. You know, folks, like, I got to get my pen out. I got to take yeah. my nose. My Auntie Gladys, you know, she. I got to get my pen. This is what you said at this time. She gave me the time stamp yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> everything, no doubt. right? You know, and so, so shout out to especially the fam. You know, yeah. especially our family no members question, who who support us, and y'all know who you are. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there are three three people I just wanted to shout out: Overland out in Utah. Yeah. Um, Shay. Yeah, Shay, out in Texas. Coach Carter up in um uh, in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, and these are three of uh, our listeners, our followers who um, have reached out, and I reached out too, and we've had conversations and and whatnot, man. I, I and I just wanted to say thank you, you know, sure, just sure. just gratitude for for the support. Great, and and for me, you know, how I am. I I just like talking to people. No doubt, you know what I'm saying. And 
this is it seems strange at the beginning it, in terms of just talking into this microphone and not being able to hear or be, not being able to see the folks who are receiving it. This is just straight crazy to me, right? Yeah. But um, to be able to have some of these conversations with with some of the listeners, some mm-hmm. of the folks who who get down with us, man, it's, it's just been a blessing. So thank you. Yeah, thank man. you to everyone. To um, all of y'all, man, like, it's it's unbelievable, man. The messages, like, it's humbling. And what I think, you talking about, bro? I think, like, sometimes people people would think like a person is just saying that, right? Like, man, it's humbling, right? It's like speaking for me. Speaking is humbling, right? Yeah. And a lot of times it's like, it's humbling because I never saw myself doing it, mm-hmm. right? It's a lot of things in my life that I saw myself doing. Playing ball, I loved it, bro. Like everything about it, you knew. Like yeah. I saw myself doing that. I never saw myself getting up on a stage and speaking. Mm-hmm. Never saw that, right? And so... When it has manifested into what it has manifested into, every time I'm like, God, like, thank you, man. Like, podcasting. Yeah. I ain't never think about podcasting. I ain't never think about sitting down, talking, right? Landscape and the world shifts. Mm -hmm. You know, people are coming. Hey, man, y'all need to do this. Hey, man, you and old need to go share this, that, and the third. We don't look at it like, oh, man, we're going to podcast and do this. We're in the business of impact, in the business of helping people, in the business of putting out good energy into the world. So when you do it and it's received. Man, that's crazy to me. It's it's humbling, man. It's still crazy. It's humbling, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah. You know, but also I think it's confirmation. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? It's confirmation that you're doing the right thing, right, in the right way, and you're in the right season. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of a lot of us. When things change, whether it be landscape, whether it be business, whether it be life, we resist it, right? And it can it can end up being the biggest blessing of our life. Like speaking for me, man, I ran from speaking for so long. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking, ran from it. Cats will come up, hey man, you need to speak. I'm, like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to speak. Hey man, you need to speak. I'm 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 somewhere at Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. Cats coming up to me don't even supposed to be coming up. I'm grabbing a, a wood center block trying to help somebody. Hey man, yeah. you need to speak. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. And what it was was God saying, Hey man, I'm waiting on you. Mm-hmm. Whenever you ready, I'll be here. I'll be here. And I'm like, nah, I'm cool. Hey man, everything you want for your family, I'm waiting on you. I'm like, nah, God, I'm good. I don't want to do that. And God's like, no, it ain't about you. Yes. yes. I was thinking it was about me. I, I don't want to do that. And a cat like 80 years old, bro. I'm in a Bible study group. Cat mm-hmm. like 80 years old that don't even say nothing. Most days we we discussing the scripture. My man be sitting there like. <laughs> and one day the- cat telling me in a Bible study group, no, bro, you need to do it. I'm like, nah. He was like, you looking at it wrong. Mm-hmm. It ain't about you. It's about what it can do in the lives of others. Right. And he just shut up, went back to the room. I was like, that's it. Profundity is in, it. in simplicity. That's it. That was as profound as it could be. And it changed your life, your wife's life, your kids' life, your family's life forever, for like generations. He said, You're thinking about it wrong. You're thinking about it wrong. How is it that you're going to help somebody else? He talking, I got some fun. You know what I'm saying? But um before we get out on this on on this this uh 14th episode, man, I, I really what's been on my heart is this notion of maturity. How can we press our maturity? What is it? What are some things that will press us to be more mature people? Because um I think our our lacking, our disappointment, our depression, mm-hmm. our um, inability to be in the moment, our inability to uh, really grasp the principle of gratitude yeah. is really um, seated in our immaturity, our inability to press for maturity. Yeah. Right? And there are three keys to maturity. Let's talk about it. One. Obedience. Yeah. A mature person is obedient. Mm-hmm. 
right? Obedience is um, simply compliance to an order or a request with gladness. This prepositional phrase is the key, with gladness. With gladness. Compliance to an order with gladness. With gladness. Obedience, right? Gladness. That's the... Mm. That's the first level of maturity. Mm -hmm. The second one is submission. Submission. Right? The um the fact of accepting or yielding to a force. Mm -hmm. The fact of accepting and yielding to a force. Submission. But again, the prepositional phrase, with excitement and enthusiasm. Excitement and enthusiasm. Because I can make you submit and you mad about it, you still gonna miss the lesson. Yep. Right? Yep. But when you submit and say, Yes, I submit unto you, God, I submit unto you, universe, I submit unto you, mother, I submit unto you, father, I submit unto this process. Mm -hmm. Gladly, wholly, and enthusiastically, then that end is where you get the lesson. Yeah. Right? Because you can be compliant mm -hmm. and not submit. Yeah. Your compliance, right, will not get you the fullness of the lesson. Yeah. Most people walk in compliance. Yeah. I'm going to do this because I'm going to get a check on the back end. Yep. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to. I'm going to do what's quote unquote right because I don't want to get in trouble. Right. Not because it's just right to do. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm glad about doing it. Yep. Not because of the lesson that I'm going to receive in behind it. Compliance. Not because of the blessing that's going to come from the lesson. Mm -hmm. Right. Submission. Yeah. The fact of accepting or yielding to a force, yeah. but you yield in, into that force with gladness, with excitement, and with enthusiasm. Not compliant. Not compliant. And then third, the third key yeah. to maturity. Acquiesce. Acquiesce. We must become a people who acquiesce. Yeah. If you're walking in maturity. Because acquiesce is simply to reluctantly accept mm. a thing without protest. Without protest. Reluctantly. And re reluctantly, because that means you have the faculty of thought. You have the faculty mm. of experiences, right? You have your own everything, your perception and your perspective that you bring into the table. Mm hmm Right. So you re mean if somebody is telling you something that is almost counter or asking you to do something that is counter to your experiences. Yeah. So that what makes it reluctant. Yeah. Right. But you do it without protest. Mm. But you do it anyway. Right there, boy. That's why that's the third level right of maturity. There, that's grown for business. Yeah, that grown for business there. You got to be in a certain space and place to do that. So that's why I tell anybody, especially young folks, I'm telling young folks, listen, if you do these three things right here, how it's going to manifest, I don't know. Where it's going to manifest, I don't know. How God is going to walk in your life, I don't know. I'm not the God. Yeah. I'm not omnipotent or none of that stuff. <laughs> no, I don't know. But I know to run on to see what the end going to be. This is what running on, seeing what the end going to be looks like. Obedience. Good book. Obedience. Good to his word. So obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Be obedient. Yeah. Submission. Submission. Submit excitedly, gladly. Yeah. Right? And then thirdly, and one and the most powerful one of the three is acquiesce. Acquiesce. Doing it even though you are reluctant, mm -hmm. even though you have experiences that may be counter to what you're being asked to do in this moment. Yes, sir. And you do it without protest mm. without protest and you see how we go from okay yeah i'm gonna do it um with gladness yeah right that's your obedience mm -hmm. then i'm gonna do it with excitement yeah that's your submission yeah people get caught up between the submission and the acquiesce yeah because if i'm not excited about it then they uh, what you'll say is i'm not gonna do it yeah because i can't see it yeah because even when you submit you got to see it at some point in that process. Mm -hmm. That's why you become excited about it. Yeah. The power of acquiesce is you don't see it nowhere along the way. You are protesting. I mean, you are, are, are questioning it all along the way, yet you do it and you still don't protest about it. And it counters your typical train of thought. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is It is countering your, your experiences. Mm-hmm. 
And it, in doing so, you still do it, and you do it without saying a word. No yeah, protest. Without protest. On the backside of that is maturity. Yeah. Right? Because this is what? Maturity loves righteousness. Mm-hmm. Immaturity loves rightness. Rightness. Yeah. So we're trying to develop in this new season, in this next season. We're trying to, um, in, in the restoration season, we're trying to build and increase our maturity. Mm. That's the press. Yeah. That's my press, my maturity, my maturity in my spirituality. Yes, sir. Become a more, more mature spiritual person. Mature. Pride is concerned with who's right. Maturity is concerned with what's, what's right. right. Yes. Yeah. I right. got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yes. Wrap it. I'm going to wrap it with this right here. It says, patience, child, patience. Remember, life is a journey. If you got everything you wanted all at once, there'd be no point for living. Enjoy the ride. And in the end, you'll see all these setbacks as giant leaps forward. Only you couldn't see the bigger picture in the moment. Mm. Remain calm. All is within reach. All you have to do is show up every day, put your feet on the floor, stay true to your path, and you will surely find the treasure you seek. Patience. Young child, patience. Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy it, embrace it, and celebrate it every step of the way. There you have it. Enjoy it, embrace it, and, and celebrate it. Celebrate it every step of the way, this journey. I appreciate your time, your ear, your support. Man, you give it to them, ain't? Peace. Peace. Peace.